There's so much BS out there about how to build passive income, but we're gonna give you the real strategies real people are using to build real wealth in a passive way where your money's working for you, you're not always working for you. Now, our opinions on this have been informed by 10,000 plus hours of consulting clients and figuring out what they've done. Whether it's helping a client with an estate plan and seeing how did they build their wealth and having those conversations, we've heard the stories and seen it on paper, on the balance sheet about how they've truly built passive wealth and income. That's how our opinion has been informed on this, real people, real experiences, and we found three ways. Number one, the side hustle or a small business. Number two, we're gonna talk about real estate. Wealth in America is built on real estate. And number three, that enigma, the retirement account. I'm just telling you, people that have real wealth, that are enjoying retirement, not working, that really have passive income, there is no other way than those three things. There's just not. It's one of those three. All right, let me start with number one. When we say side hustle, that's just the gateway drug. I'm not saying have a side hustle forever. Maybe that's what you're gonna do, but that's not gonna be passive income. If you just have a side hustle forever, maybe it's a passion or something you do on the side to get extra income, that will never be passive. But that side hustle can turn into a small business. That small business turns into a large business. And now you have a machine, you've scaled it, you have people, you can kind of be chairman of the board. And this is how people that have built businesses truly have passive income. They built it to a point where now the business continues to operate without them being there every day. Because small businesses primarily rely on the small business owner being there. Mm -hmm. The side hustle is all about you putting in your time and work to gain some extra income. It's not passive. People that say, well, go start a business, it's passive income. It's some point it can be, yeah. <laughs> but not immediately. But we've seen this as we see clients who have had that business that have grown it and scaled it, that have built a team where they can come back and be like, I'm just chairman of the board. But I wanna talk about another couple things about a small business and why I love it. That is an asset in and of itself. If that business generates cash flow, that is something you can sell. So you can then sell that business and generate a stream of income from the sale of the business. A new owner comes and takes over and buys it from you and you could get a large profit. You might get three to five times the net income selling a small business. So if the business is making 200 grand a year in net income, you might get three to five times that. You could make 600 to a million dollars in just selling that business. Now it's truly passive because you sold the business. I have a call with a client buying a UPS store. She's been buying multiple UPS store locations. Now on the other end of this is a seller selling it. Get out of the business they built it up and they want to sell it and it's going to create a stream of income to them that is now truly passive so sometimes the business is an asset in and of itself at the point you want to step away from it and just have the passive stuff where you're not working every day but this isn't get rich quick and i want to make sure everybody understands that this is not something you're going to turn on the switch tomorrow and be like oh i found the secret i have passive income tomorrow no, you gotta go work for it. You gotta invest a little bit of time, oh, sorry, a little bit of money, but a lot of time. But over a long-term horizon, it is totally possible. Like we've said at the very beginning of this, this is the reality of how people have true passive income. If you're like, I don't wanna work nine to five every day for the rest of my life. Okay, you're gonna have to get out of that. You're gonna have to transition and get through it. You're gonna have to pick up the side hustle. You're gonna have to be disciplined in saving. You're gonna have to figure out how to pick up real estate properties and learn the strategies. And so it takes some work, I just wanna say that, but it's within your grasp. I like to say it's not like people are like, oh, wealth is my destiny. No, it's not. It's your decision. Mm. You have to decide to be wealthy and then commit to it. And that's what passive income is about. It's going to take some work and some commitment. Now, number two, real estate. First of all, some of you, you've already caught the vision. You're like, freaking A, I love investing in passive income producing real estate. But some of you are like, whoa, that's a bridge too far. A lot of people feel like, well, I have bad credit. I don't have enough income yet where I'd qualify for a mortgage to buy a rental. Okay, let's there's go back to step one. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> let's go back to step one. I love that too. <laughs> but also, there's a lot of creative strategies to acquiring real estate, buying properties subject to, maybe need to get into some wholesaling at first and learn the real estate investment strategies of wholesaling. There's so many big real estate investors that have started wholesaling, where they're basically getting properties under contract at a deal. They learn how to find properties, and then they go sell them to other investors that want to acquire them to buy and hold. And so there's different entry points on how to learn this. Now, again, this is like what we talked about buying a business. It takes time and some commitment. This is not passive at first, you gotta work for it. But once you get that knowledge, and I frankly, I think like wholesaling or leading creative finance strategies are a great way to enter the market, you start learning what real estate is. You start you start learning what's a good deal, what's a bad deal, how to negotiate, and then how to manage properties and people and contractors, and maybe you flip some houses. I mean, there's a lot to learn there, especially for people who are new to real estate that are just like, I'm just gonna go buy some single family rentals. Maybe, okay, that's a great strategy. Maybe it's short term, there's so much there. That's what I'm saying. But don't don't be discouraged because you think, I don't have the credit or I don't have the income. There are so many real estate investors. We talk to them. Our lawyers are talking to at least one of them every hour. 
I'm not kidding. Yeah. That is using creative strategies to acquire the real estate, even if they have the money to buy the properties, even if they have an 800 credit score, they're using creative strategies to acquire their properties. I think there's even some simple methods. I mean, there's the Burr method, you know, where you're basically buying a residence for yourself, but then you're rent, you're rehabbing it and renting it out. I love just never selling your primary residence. When you move, don't sell it. And I think a lot of clients over a 10 or 20 year period might be in three or four different homes. And I've looked, I mean, I personally made over a million dollars doing just that strategy, not selling my personal residence, moving into the next home and turning it into a rental property. And I think there's just some low hanging fruit there, guys, that could be passive ways to build wealth by just making some strategic financial decisions. When you're moving to a new house, don't sell the existing one if you don't have to. Hold it, it's an asset. If you can break even on it, you're gonna pay down the debt, it's gonna appreciate over time, and it's gonna add this passive income as the rents start to increase, you're covering your expenses, and of course you have an appreciating asset. That's a unique asset. I can't go increase the value of paper, but I can take real estate and increase the value in little ways. This is what wealthy people do. So if we've shared something here that resonates with you, I hope, but if you're like, oh, I wish I was rich, how do those rich people get rich they're doing this the secret is there is no secret <laughs> that's the secret guys that the wealthy have it's out there it's right in front of your face yeah. it's business ownership the businesses you're going into and being a customer every day they're just on the other side of it serving you it's the real estate out there that you're driving by on the freeway on the street every day and it's these next, <laughs> next the, retirement the retirement account. accounts which doesn't sound sexy it doesn't sound like some hidden gem it's staring us right in the face but i'm just telling you when we're looking at clients with their estate plan and they're planning on who Who's going to get all of their assets they've worked for and accumulate over the time? This is where there's a big chunk of them. They're putting their money over here. They're saving it for the long haul and they're doing it in a tax efficient way. See, that's the cool thing about this third one here is investing and putting that money aside in retirement accounts is I get some extra tax perks. The money I'm making is going longer. I'm building more wealth because I'm getting all these tax incentives, by either getting a deduction when I put it in on traditional accounts or I get the tax free growth of a Roth. Either way, that's more money in my pocket and less to the IRS. Because let's be honest, if you're over here with the business that's having some success and you're making some money and you'll get there, if you work hard at it, you can get there, but you're gonna have to pay the IRS some money. <laughs> Yeah. And if we can minimize that, this is gonna accelerate your wealth building. That's why we love the retirement accounts. Not only is it a way to build money for the long haul, you gotta make some good investments with it, but there's all these tax benefits to getting the money in there. There's a number of steps you gotta get to the retirement account. Again, this is not something you do one year and you're done. Passive income, check the box, done. No, we're talking about having the discipline to save and set this money aside, max out these retirement accounts. It's seven grand for an IRA. You could be doing 20, 30K in your company 401K at your day job. If you have a solo K, you could be doing 69,000 a year. You could put them in a health savings account. You got a spouse. We can do Roth IRAs for them. Let's get your kids involved. If you have a small business and they're working in it, we got some income to them. I mean, there's a lot of different facets to this on how to build it in the different buckets. It's some, one of these things that if you started on year one, you don't feel like you've moved the needle. You just don't. Year two or three, you kind of don't. But once you're like year four or five, you've got about four or five years of contributions. You start to have some investment growth of the money you put in on one or two. You start seeing that, that needle really move. And now your money's worth working for you. And now all of a sudden the investment power and growth of that account, the returns that you get from it are more than the money you put in. And that's when you start getting excited because you're like, woo, this thing's growing, not just from what I put in and contribute every year, but the investment growth. But you've got to get the ball rolling. You've got to have the discipline to get through those few years where it seems a little like slow to start getting the money working for you. Remember, the money you're making is you're building wealth. You've got income in the retirement account, whether it's real estate you own in the retirement account, a small business, a startup, crypto crypto, a stock, an ETF, whatever it is, that income you're getting off of it, or the gain when you sell any of those assets, it doesn't even hit your 1040. It's not on your tax return. You do not send any money to the IRS, and there's no melt. <laughs> Nothing's <laughs> falling off and going to the IRS, all right? The Roth accounts in particular, when you're pulling that out later, you get to keep every penny of it. There's no tax on the way out either. So that's the unique thing about retirement accounts and why people freaking use them. I know it's not sexy. I know people are like, well, that's, you know, IRA, 401k, that's not sexy. Guys, it is how people build wealth. It is how people are living in retirement and they have a retirement they're looking forward to it's because they've been disciplined they've saved they use these tax advantage accounts and they've done it for the long haul now we hope these three pillars are helpful to you to learning the real strategies about how you can take control of your financial future and have a passive income empire